The oceans remain more mysterious to us than even outer space. The murky depths of our own seas are places we have almost no understanding of, and they're environments that are totally hostile to human life. The best we can do in some circumstances is put a camera down there and then try to figure out what's going on. And you better believe that there's some terrifying and strange images coming up when scientists look at the footage. From the enormous squid to the fish that some believe could be a ghost, here's 20 mysterious underwater creatures caught on tape. <sighs> Number 20. Big Fin Squid As the curator of cephalopods at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, Mike Viccioni is used to getting questions about deep-sea animals that he doesn't know much about. There's even something called the squid phone, which is a hotline right to Mike where people can leave their squid sighting tips. And in 2001, he got a call that caught his attention immediately. A woman from Louisiana talked about a strange big squid that was more than 20 feet long and had been filmed by her boyfriend from an oil company vehicle in the Gulf of Mexico. He thought that has to be a giant squid. Giant squids are hard to find, and biologists have been trying for decades to catch one alive on camera. Diver drops his camera in the ocean, but when he looks at the footage. The grainy video didn't show a giant squid. It was something different from everything Squiddy Viccioni had ever seen or heard before. A squid hanging in the water by its fins, which were much bigger than its body. The fins moved back and forth along the squid's long, thin arms, bent sharply before draping down to the darkness like a ghostly gossamer. Viccioni was able to find eight more sightings from deep-sea submarines around the world. Since then, scientists have found out what the mystery squid is and given it a scientific name, Magnapina, which is better known as the Big Fin Squid. But because of its long, thin arms and spooky face, it's also been called the Long Arm Squid, Daddy Long Legs of the Ocean, and more recently the Ghost of the Sea. It sure has a ghostly look about it. This one is pretty terrifying. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Ghostfish. Sea creature that's almost totally transparent, identified as a salp. A diver was confused when he saw what looked like a weird ghost fish while swimming off the coast of Malta. Raniero Borg found the strange animal near Malsafor in Malta. He said that in his 40 years of diving, he'd never seen anything like it. He said that it looked like a baby dolphin or jelly whale. It had a big mouth, and because the body was clear, you could see its insides. It was about 8 inches long and about 12 inches wide. Its spine and rib-like parts were also clear. In the video, Mr. Borg touches the creature, and his hand is clearly visible through the creature's body. It looks like a fish, with a mouth on the front and an organ that looks like a tube on the inside. At first, the diver had no idea what it was. He thought it was the baby of a dolphin or a whale. Now he knows that what he saw was a type of salp after talking to people at Malta's International Ocean Institute. Salps are often mistaken for jellyfish, but they're more closely related to humans than jellyfish, and they grow very quickly. They reach adulthood in just 48 hours, and they can add up to 10% to their length every hour. Thankfully, this isn't the case for humans. They swim through the water by tightening bands of muscles around their bodies. This pulls water into one end of their bodies and pushes it out the other. Salps usually live between two and three months before a mackerel or a tuna eats them. Life in the sea is pretty cruel. Number 18. Pyrosome, the giant glowing sea worm. The giant pyrosome is an organism that's both hermaphroditic and clonable. This means that it has both male and female parts. Pretty neat. What if you could make your own genderless clone and send it out to do your job instead of you? These amazing creatures can grow, shrink, have babies, and come back to life on their own. This makes them one of the best suited animals to possibly living forever. They're free-floating tunicates that can grow to be as long as 60 feet and as wide as a person. They always eat by filling filtering water through their bodies. 
That's how they get their food, get rid of waste, and move. In reality, this creature is made up of thousands of clones that all work together to do this job. It'll keep making copies of itself for as long as it needs to. They're also bioluminescent, which means that they make their own light. In ancient Greek, pyrosome means fire body. As long as a single clone is left, the organism can rebuild itself if it's attacked, which means it can pretty much live forever. I'm getting major cell from Dragon Ball vibes. I bet you once a whole bunch of these get together, they start talking about just how perfect they are. Number 17. Glowing Neon Jellyfish Floating Through Ocean this animal, which looks like a jellyfish but doesn't have stingers, is native to the east coasts of both North and South America. In 1982, it was found in the Black Sea, where ballast water had moved it there. It went on to reach the Caspian Sea, and in both places, it kept growing in big numbers. These sea walnuts, as they're known, cause local fisheries to fail because they eat zooplankton, which is eaten by commercial fish. Memiosis laidae has also been found in the Baltic, North, and Mediterranean seas. Even though they look similar, comb jellies are not jellyfish. Muscles in jellyfish move them through the water by making their bells pulse, but comb jellyfish move through the water with the help of eight rows of beating cilia. Jellyfish have cells that can sting, called nidocytes, but comb jellies use sticky cells called colocytes to catch food. That means that comb jellies don't hurt when you touch them. Light that bounces off of the cilia, which are always moving, makes the rows of comb jellies glow with beautiful rainbow colors. Comb jellies can also make bioluminescence with the help of a calcium-activated photoprotein-producing light cell that lie under each of its eight rows of cilia. When a sea walnut's disturbed, it'll light up greenish blue, which is its colorful way of saying, hey, get the hell off of me. We think that sea walnuts got to the Black, Caspian, North, and Baltic seas by riding on ballast water. There, their voracious appetites wiped out plankton populations. But the pink comb jelly, which lives in the Western Atlantic, is happy to eat sea walnuts. When pink comb jellies followed sea walnuts across the ocean, the number of plankton in the areas that they took over began to stabilize. Number 16. Giant Worm, Iceland's Loch Ness Monster? Next up, we have a video claiming to show a strange river monster with a long snake-like shape swimming in a glacial river in eastern Iceland. Could it be the Icelandic lake monster Lagerfjordsurmjörin? Some people say yes, while others are less sure. Many people thought it was either a real known animal, a hoax made with a computer, or a fake made from bits of regular junk by some pranksters. Either way, it's been watched more than 3 million times on YouTube. There's a few things that it almost certainly isn't, starting with what it looks like, which is a snake. Snakes can't control their body temperature, so they have to rely on the environment to do it for them. That's why you might see snakes in the wild basking in the sun early in the morning. They're trying to warm. Even though some snakes can live in water, most of them live in places that are much warmer. The last place a snake would want to be is in an icy stream like this. Because the footage is short, shaky, and low quality, it's hard to tell if the supposed monster is even moving. It looks like it's going upstream, but that might just be because the water's moving past it. It could be getting closer to the shore, or its head could just be sitting there, more or less still in the water, while the rest of its body moves with the current. So. Is it a sea monster, or just some hose pipe covered in ice? Number 15. Frogfish. The frogfish is a very strange looking animal, but it looks that way for a reason. The majority of species are small and come in many different colors. Their bodies are kind of round and compact. Their first dorsal fin is different from the other dorsal fins, and it's turned into a lure, or esca. Some types of esca glow because the fish's bacteria and chemicals make the esca light up. The frogfish is the master of aggressive mimicry in the ocean. It's interesting to divers and scary to prey. The frogfish is thought to be one of the most complicated and effective examples of aggressive mimicry because of its amazing camouflage and complex ways of luring prey. 
The frogfish eats meat and it can swallow it faster than any other vertebrate. The frogfish can also move around on the seafloor and even climb with the help of its pectoral fins, which are kind of more like legs. Its skin usually has lumps, bumps, flaps, eye spots, and spinules all over it. The name hairy frogfish comes from how long and thin that these spines can be. The fish's skin can also be home to algae and other simple organisms. It's got a mouth that can open up and grow to be 12 times as big as it was before. Thanks to this trait, it can eat stuff that's bigger than it is. It also has teeth on the roof of its mouth. Its gills are in tiny holes behind the pectoral fins. The pelvic fins help the fish walk and also keep it still when it's trying to ambush another fish. This is one truly weird fish. Number 14, Ribbon Eel. Ribbon eels are a smaller species of eel with a ton of personality. You can find them all over the Indonesian central region. Ribbon eels and their bigger cousins, moray eels, are related, but how much do you know about these weird creatures? Here's some surprising and interesting facts. Ribbon eels have interesting life cycles that include not only three different colors, but also complete changes in gender. Ribbon eels are most often found on healthy coral reefs, but they also seem to do well on reefs that have been damaged and have mostly sand and rubble on the bottom. Most of the time, you can only see the head and the upper body of a ribbon eel because they live in sand burrows and they hide under rocks and in cracks. It's a rare thing to see an entire ribbon eel, especially one swimming freely, but if you do, you'll quickly understand where they get their name. Ribbon eels have long nostrils that stick out, making them look almost like seahorses. Ribbon eels can feel vibrations in the water with their noses, which helps them hunt and protect themselves. Divers often think that ribbon eels are aggressive, just like they do with many moray eels, because they're often seen with their mouths opening and closing in a way that could be seen as threatening, but they're actually just breathing. But when a ribbon eel opens its mouth, do be careful. Its tiny razor-like teeth are very sharp, even if it opens its mouth just to breathe. Number 13. Rare prehistoric frilled shark in Japan. A shark with frills kinda sounds cute, like a potato chip or a dandy in the 1800s. But in reality, it's a very scary shark, and it's not cute at all. Sharks are already scary enough on their own, so it's best to leave them be so they can do their shark thing and not decide to tear you up. Some of these sharks are so old that they lived during the Jurassic period. Yeah, these things were swimming in the oceans a very long time ago. Also, the frilled shark hunts in a pretty crazy way. It waits for its prey while lying still in the water, then coils up like a snake and strikes its victim. But that's only the start. Once they have stunned or killed their prey, they use their 300 backward pointing teeth to move the food down into the shark's stomach. Once you're inside, you can't really get out again. Bad news for the prey making this little sea monster one sneaky predator. And by little, I mean seven feet of ancient pure killing power. Number 12, Flame Box Crab. The Flame Box Crab lives from the Caribbean to Massachusetts. It lives on sand flats and in areas with both sand and rocks, and it often buries itself in sand. You can see them pretty often when you snorkel, and as you pass over them, they're usually just sitting there, being crabby, which may be because of how well they're camouflaged. They think that you can't see them, and that's the way that they want it to stay. Box crabs got their name from the way that they can fold their legs into their bodies to make them look like a neat little box. Their other name, shame face, comes from the way that their claws fold in front of the face. Like they're trying to hide it because they did something silly. This crab shell is rounded in front and almost straight in back. The edges of a back make a thin roof over the legs, covering them partially. The large claws are flattened triangles with a crest on the top, and the fingers are strongly bent down. It's grayish with purple-brown markings on the back and bands on the legs. And it's a pretty cool crab, I'm sure you'll agree. Number 11, the squid worm. The squid worm looks like an animal that's a mix between a squid and a worm. In fact, it's all worm, which belongs to the same group as leeches and earthworms. It's got 10 tentacles on its head because, hell, why not? The tentacles are stretchy and they grow longer than the 10 centimeter body of the squid worm. Two of them, the ones that are more yellow, are used to feed. The other eight help it breathe or maybe help it find its way. We aren't entirely sure about that yet. It's also got two feathery brush-like structures on the top of its head. These are called neutral organs. 
and they work like a nose to pick up chemical smells in the water. The demersal zone, just above the ocean floor, is one of the richest and most mysterious parts of the ocean. You guessed it, that's where the squidworm lives. It's in the largest habitat on Earth and a safe place for life that wants to stay out of the limelight. Here, animals can easily avoid fishing nets that are towed along the sea floor, and they stay out of reach of other nets that are pulled over them. To see how much life there is in these waters, you need special submersibles. These submersibles can move around easily and collect animals without hurting their fragile bodies. Who knows what the submarines will find next? Number 10. Giant Isopod Off the coast of Indonesia, scientists have found a new kind of monster. It's a new type of supergiant isopod, which is related to the common pill bug, but it's much bigger, and it just got found. The roly-poly pill bug in your yard has a huge cousin that lives in the deepest parts of the ocean. The giant isopod, Bathinomus gigantus, walks around on the deep sea floor and it eats dead fish and other stuff that falls from above. The finding was made during the 2018 South Java Deep Sea Biodiversity Expedition. The 36.3 centimeter male named Bathonomus rosca is the holotype, which is the only physical example of the new species. It was used to describe and name the new species. Compared to the other one, the closest known species, they had a smoother skin and different body proportions and shapes. They were also bigger on average. This find is an example of deep sea gigantism, which is when some animals in the deep sea grow to be way bigger than their relatives in shallow sea or on land. The length of most isopods is less than 10 millimeters, so this guy's breaking all the records. Number 9. Nudie Branch People have written poems about nudie branches and their bright colors, so their amazing looks are usually the only thing that people know about them. These mollusks have no shells, and they're related to sea slugs. They have some of the most interesting shapes, colors, and patterns of any animal. But their world is complicated and often dangerous, just like any other creatures. That wild color scheme is a warning. They're carnivores that eat algae, sponges, anemones, corals, barnacles, and even other nudie branches as they slowly move through their range. On top of their heads, they have two tentacles called rhinophores that are very sensitive and help them find food. The colors of nudie branches come from the food that they eat, which helps them blend in with the surroundings. Some even keep the poisons of their food as a defense against predators. Nudie branches are both male and female at the same time, so they can mate with any other adult of their species. Their lifespans are very different. Some of them live less than a month, while others can live up to a year. Not having a shell also makes it easier for nudie branches to move around. Number 8. Gulper Eel The gulper eel is also called the pelican eel. Both names should give you a pretty good idea what this eel looks like. They got a big mouth. It looks kind of like a pelican's beak. This lets them eat animals that are much bigger than they are. This eel is a monster because its mouth alone is more than a quarter of its length. The gulper eel looks pretty different from all other types of eels. Its pectoral fins are so small that you almost can't see them. Unlike many other deep sea animals, it has small eyes. Instead of generating images, it's thought that the eyes evolved to pick up on very small amounts of light. The gulper eel has a tail that's very long and looks like a whip. The long tails of fish caught in fishing nets and brought to the surface have been found to be knotted in more than one place. Eels move with their long tails. At the end of the tail is a photophore, which is an organ that makes light. The photophore glows pink and sometimes give off flashes of red light because of a process called bioluminescence. Since the eel's body isn't made for hunting, it's thought that it uses this light as a fishing lure to bring fish and other animals to its huge mouth. Number 7. Maris orthricana. Maris orthricana is a phalagic siphonophore, which is a general name for a group of deep sea siphonophores. Deep sea ocean explorers and manned submersibles have seen this species at depths as deep as 2,000 meters. Like other siphonophores, M. orthicana is made up of a group of specialized individuals called zooids. These zooids have different jobs like moving, catching food, getting rid of waste, and reproducing. No matter what they do, all of the zooids on the stem of a siphonophore come from the same egg that was fertilized. So they all have the same genes. 
Maris orthicana can grow to be 2 to 3 meters long, and each of its tentacles can be 50 centimeters long. It sometimes moves forward and sometimes stops to put out fishing lines that are ready to catch passing creatures. It's a meat eater whose main food source is thought to be small crustaceans. Carl Linnaeus was the first person to write about Siphonophore in 1758. He wrote about the Portuguese man of war. Only three more species were named until the early 1800s, but 56 new species of Siphonophore were found and named in the 19th century, which was something of a golden age for finding Siphonophores. Number 6. Ghostly Yeti Crab Swarms Discovered Near Antarctica Scientists say they found a lost world of strange deep-sea species near hot, mineral-rich hydrothermal vents in the oceans off Antarctica. This is a new species of yeti crab that hasn't been named yet. This small yeti crab makes the best of a pretty bad neighborhood. K. Tyleri has a thick body and spiny legs that help it stick to the walls of hydrothermal vents, where it looks for a narrow comfort zone between superheated vent water and cold seawater. Scientists found more than 700 yeti crabs in one square meter, which shows that they seem to do pretty well there. Yeti crabs have thick hair-like bristles, just like their mythical namesake, the yeti. We think the bristles on their legs and belly might help them gather the bacteria that they eat. It's one of the many cool new things we found in this part of the ocean recently. This is a new providence of deep sea life, and it's like a new continent. Number 5. Pycnogonid Sea Spider Sea spiders are marine arthropods that live in all of the seas around the world. There's more than 1,300 known species, and the length of their legs ranges from 1 millimeter to more than 70 centimeters. Most of them are on the smaller end of this range when they live in shallow water. However, in the Antarctic and deep seas, they can get quite large. Even though sea spiders are neither spiders nor arachnids, they're usually put in the chelicerids group, which puts them closer to real spiders than to other well-known arthropod groups like insects or crustaceans. But genetic data shows that they're related to all other living arthropods, so it's a point of disagreement. Sea spiders have long legs, which is different from their small body. Most species have eight legs for walking, but some have five or six pairs. You can find these animals all over the world, from Australia and New Zealand to the Pacific coast of the US, the Mediterranean Sea, the Caribbean Sea, and even the North and South Poles. Most sea spiders are predators or scavengers that eat meat. Even though they may feed by sticking their proboscis into a much bigger sea anemone, most sea anemones survive the trauma, which makes the sea spider a parasite and not a predator of sea anemones. Number 4. Hagfish The lack of jaws in hagfish makes them an unusual fish species. Only these creatures are known to have a skull and no spine. No other animals have this weird feature. The longest one ever discovered was 4 feet 2 inches in length, but they can grow to be a lot longer. They've inhabited the world's waters for the past 300 million years with little alteration from their ancestors. They range in color from gray to pink, and they feed on worms and decaying or dead marine life that's washed up on the ocean floor. Perhaps the most repulsive aspect about the hagfish is their slime. It's gross, it's milky, it's stringy. It's a self-defense mechanism, and it makes them more difficult to capture. In fact, just by holding one by the tail, you can collect enough to fill five gallons. But really, why would you ever want to do that? Number three. Solumbulula sea pen. Scientists have captured film of a massive alien-looking marine creature with tentacles leisurely cruising the depths of the Pacific Ocean. And they aren't sure if they're witnessing the first of a new species or not. Researchers on board the EV Nautilus observed the peculiar creature. Watch as the expedition scientists go into full wow mode when the clear photographs of the bizarre species emerge. A second one of the bizarre animals was spotted by the scientists a few minutes later, but this time they were unable to capture it on film. It resembled a free-swimming flower around the size of the submarine, with tentacles extending 40 centimeters from nearly 2 meters of stem 
and a solitary feeding polyp encircled by barbed tentacles that looked like spiked petals. The Solimbalula sea pen was the initial suspect among researchers when they tried to decide what it was. Sea pens, however, had previously only been spotted in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. If the researchers did discover a new species, it would be a major discovery. Or just an ordinary sea pen who's very lost. Number 2. The Supergiant Amphipod, Alicella gigantea. Alicella gigantea is the largest amphipod in the world. Some of them can grow up to 13 inches long. At the end of the 19th century, the first specimens were taken from the Madeira Abyssinal Plain. Since then, more have been found in abyssinal plains in both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, and in the Kermetic Trench in the Southwest Pacific. One sample was found in the stomach of a black-footed albatross, but it's thought that it died before it was eaten. The Alicellidae are a family of amphipod crustaceans that live in deep sea as scavengers, often near hydrothermal vents. The lower Carboniferous period, about 350 million years ago, is thought to have been when amphipods first appeared. Even though the order Amphipoda is very old, only one species of fossils from the lower Cretaceous have been found at Weld Clay in the UK. We have a lot to learn about this mysterious ancient critter, but what we do know already is that it was big. Number 1. Chimera There are ghosts that live in water at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Or at least ghost sharks. Recently, a ghost shark, or chimera, was caught on camera for the first time. It looks like its eyes flash with electric light. In fact, these animals have very big eyes, so they can take in as much light as they can in the dark depths. The blue chimera with its pointy nose looks pretty terrifying, like a horror movie monster with flashing eyes. This one was shot about 6,000 feet below the surface of the water. They can live in water up to 8,500 feet deep in all of the oceans, except the Arctic and Antarctic. They have tiny pores on their noses that lead to cells that can sense electricity. They also don't use their tails to move, so it looks like they fly instead of swim. They swim with their front fins. Their skeletons are made of cartilage, and the lines on their faces that look like stitches make them look even more like monsters. It's like, is this Dr. Frankenstein's pet fish? Not something you'd want to meet in the middle of the night. What kind of creatures do you imagine living in unexplored parts of our ocean? Should we spend more time discovering our oceans than we already do? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.